Hey, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'd like to show you how to start using a new feature in the Zam web grid, uh, some unbound columns. And so I've got a grid here that's bound up to some data. And you'll notice that we have this, this column over here called total units. And basically the way total units works is that it's the sum of the units on order and the units in stock. Now, this might feel like something that uh, would commonly exist within the model that we're binding to. Um, but in this case, it's not. We just have the units in stock and the units on order. And then what we'll do is create an unbound column and a value converter in order to give us the value that we need uh, for the column. So that, that's basically the steps that are involved. And so why don't I go ahead and show you in Visual Studio how it's done. So here we are in our Silverlight application and uh, on the XAML page, I have a few things set up that I wanna go through with you. First of all, I uh, am using a view model class and so I'm declaring a namespace here, VM for the view model and I'll take you through the class in just a moment, but here's the namespace for the view model so that uh, uh, we have reference to it. I'm also creating a reference to the IG grid namespace and so you'll notice here that I'm looking at the Silverlight controls and that is uh, in the assembly for the Silverlight Sam web grid version 10.1. Um, so basically here in the user control dot resources, I'm declaring an instance of the unbound columns view model and giving it the key of view model. So that gives us an instance of the view model class to feed up to our grid. And then I'll set the data context of our grid to the instance of the view model class. Inside this grid, I just have one row and basically one column, and I'm adding the XAM web grid into the layout grid. So that's some, some pretty basic stuff. Um, I'm setting the item source to the items property of the view model, and then down in here, I'm, I'm customizing some columns. I'm saying right now I just have a text column for each one of these for title, unit price, units in stock, and units on order. So what I wanna do is create an unbound column for total units. So let's update the markup first of all to, to add in that unbound column. So the syntax is pretty, pretty easy. So I'm just creating an unbound column in the grid and then I'm giving it a key of total units. The key to it though is to give it a value converter and we're even gonna take it to another step also and give it a sort comparer so that it has the logic in it to handle the sorting um, when it happens as well. So before we start customizing the values for those attributes, let's drop down to our view model class and also the, the custom classes that I'm creating for the converter and the sorter. So let's switch over to that view model now. So here's the view model class. And basically what I'm doing is a lazy initialization of our items. So I have an observable collection of the inventory item class. And so basically the first time you hit the items, if the item count is equal to zero, then I'm adding in a number of different ones. And man, who doesn't want prairie dog pancakes and some gopher green wraps and platypus popsicles and on and on. So this gives us the values of our inventory items. And basically we'll, once we've added those in, we'll return the value up to uh, the view. And so that's basically the view model class. Now, like I was saying, there's a value converter that you need to create in order to handle the, the composition of that, that unbound column. So just like any other value converter that you use in Silverlight, uh, we're, we're implementing the interface of iValueConverter and implementing the convert function. Now this isn't only really a, a one-way binding, so I'm, I'm just leaving the convert back um, unimplemented, but if you had need to do that, you could certainly add an implementation here. But it's got the standard signature of a value converter, and all I'm doing is taking a look at the incoming value, casting it as an inventory item, and then summing the two together and returning that value. And what returns here is what's placed into the value of the column. So that's the value converter. Now, when once someone clicks on something in the header and they want to sort the values in that column, we need to provide a compare implementation in order to facilitate the, the sorting. So there's another class that's necessary here, and if you, I'll scroll down so you can see it. I've created a units sorter class, and this implements iCompare for the inventory item. And when I do the compare here, basically I'm looking at two instances of the inventory item, and I'm just doing a summation here to find the total number of, of units, and basically doing a, a compare to at that point. 
So now that I have these two classes, I can update the XAML in order to take uh, advantage of their capabilities. So let's switch back over there now. So here I am at the top of the page, and you can see I've updated the user control .resources, uh block here. And I have the units converter and the unit sorter brought in, given the key of units converter and sorter. Now, normally, this, they might not live in the same namespace. Um, you can see I'm bringing them in under the view model namespace. They, they might live somewhere else in your application. Just to keep things simple, I, I just put everything within the same file. So they're all found under the same namespace. But basically, you, you bring in the namespace and, and you create a reference to them here under the resources. And then we can come down here and update the markup for the bound column in order to point to the instances of those objects. So let me update that now for you. So now you can see that the total units unbound column is pointing to the static resource of units converter for the value converter and units sorter for the sort compare. So now that we have all of that set up, let's run the page and we should be able to get the, the right value in the column and also be able to sort on it. So here's the grid now. We have the total units. So 10 plus 4 would certainly be 14. On down the line, it looks like it has the right value. And when I sort it, it looks like it's handling it exactly the way I want. So like I said, you might have a, a model object that would do this for you, but this definitely gives you the steps that you need in order to create values for an unbound column and also give you the, the hooks in for making sure it can sort. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.